and welcome back to another Java game development video. In this video, I'm going to showcase a final group project I helped develop for my Fundamentals of Computer Science class. I took this class as my first programming class at my college, and our goal was to create any sort of game or function in Java. My group decided to go through the graphical route and mix some console functionality with the JPanel to display graphics and statistics. We had to meet the requirements of what we learned throughout the course, which was basic functionality and design of Java, such as using functions, classes, creating, writing, and reading files, and writing and reading from the console. It was a fun project to create, and I especially enjoyed this one because it was my first team project. Now let's dive into it. To first run the application, we can press the run button and a prompt will appear in the console. We can next type any type of message in the console and press enter. It will then prompt a JPanel with graphics. We can see that our message will now display for each letter and scroll across the screen. In the statistics below, we can see what our message was. It also tells us the LED width, which is how many pixels long this should be. Right now there are 60 LEDs spanning across. We can also see the LED size, which is how big each individual LED circle is. Next, we have how fast we can scroll across the screen with string speed. Finally, we now have how many times it should repeat. All of these settings can be changed in a file that gets generated when the program is ran. We can find this file by going to the file location of the project and opening up the new constants text file. Upon opening, we can see the run configuration numbers. This is the LED width, size, speed, and how many times it repeats. For the graphics, we use an extra class called Drawing Panel that helps my team draw. It essentially is a graphics library in a class. This is not my typical route, but since there were some people on my team who have never programmed before, it made it easier for them to learn. After the user types in a letter, we get each character through the Find Chars class. We extract each letter and assign it an array of binary values. This array will be looped and combined with the main empty array that you see on the main page. I got this idea after learning about how computers operate with binary values in my computer architecture class. We essentially union group one and group two together. For example, here is our initial array. Each empty value is set to zero. If the user types in the letters H and I, we will first start by looking at how the H letter is made up. We then add the left column of array B to the right far column of array A. Next, we will move all of the ones to the next left column and add any new ones to array A. We continue looping through array B and combining it to array A then set the next letter to array B once we loop through all of the columns of the first letter. Overall, this was an extremely fun learning experience for me and a great first group project. I was the group leader since I had already had many years of learning experience with Java on my own time. If you want to check out more of my Java projects, head over to my website neha.com. Here you can find detailed information about all types of my Java projects similar to this one. A game I also used this concept for was when I built Tetris in Java. I hope you all enjoyed this project and hopefully learned something from it. If you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.